Om. Namaste. Welcome everyone to Satsang today. <clears throat> and welcome, big welcome also to the many friends who are joining us today via broadcasting from all over the world. We are very happy uh, for this uh, because we know many people would like to be here in person or in form um, but uh, for whatever reason are not able to be here in this way but we can join in in real time via internet so we are very happy for this and I hope I see also many new faces and uh, I am I am hoping that you are a little familiar with the subject that we meet about today. I don't even want to limit it to say the subject discussed only, because uh, the very totality of us being here is is concerning the subject of our true nature. And uh, to come to a clarity, for it seems most human beings are not aware of ourselves at the deepest level. And uh, what is this life? What is this life? And who are we in this life? So this is the topic here. And I want to say from the start that in coming together like this, my own perspective is not merely to discuss and to exchange concepts, or to impart some philosophical outlook to you, but that every moment is the opportunity to go within and to discover, more than simply to learn, but to discover. Because that alone will stay with you, what you know in your heart, not only what you think with your mind. So, with that said, welcome. and. Uh, Very, very good. Okay, you come in for me. <clears throat> right. <laughs> very good. Good to see you. Come. <clears throat> Hi, Guruji. Hi. <clears throat> um, there's a scent. So a huge effort going on. Yes. And at the same time it's seen, yet at the same time somehow the seeing doesn't seem to make the effort any less somehow. And the effort is for what? You said there is a huge effort going on. So the effort is for what? Is to to be. There's an effort to be. Uh, without the effort to be, what are you? <laughs> what are you up to? I know it sounds crazy. <laughs> when you put it like that, yeah. Yeah. Because <laughs> <huh? laughs> you must be already, no? Even yeah. to be asking the question, no? Then the effort to be is uh, on top of the, the the effortless being. Is there not an effortlessness about being? Huh? Hmm? Or because we are referred to as human beings, no, not human becomings. <laughs> human being, human being, making effort to be. So I feel we it, it's it's important to look into that extra, to be what more than what beingness implies. So you see, ever to be, it must be something that we picked up and we have not quite understood, and we must not practice something unless you have an understanding what you are doing, you know. So, if you try to be to at least clarify, um, you know, acutely what it means to practice to be, as it is understood in your own self, what it means. 
I mean, first of all, is it, is, is it enough to be? Because everyone know they are. Everybody knows they are. You know, you know the feeling, I am, I exist. What is not known is, as what do you exist? Because we say, I exist, but we, we, when you say, who is it that, that exists? We have not gone further than just the feeling of I. I is, I is what? The person? Largely, it is accepted that when it is said like that, it is spoken by a person. The person exists. You see? But is, is what you are merely a person? And what is a person? If you are 30 years old, 25, 30, 40, have you been consistently the same person? What is a person? Does it change or is it constantly the same? What is a person? Hmm? Is it one thing but keeps on changing? Or is it never just fixed, it's always changeful? And memory make it seem as though it's one, but it's always ch changing. What is it, person? You see, even to look into this alone, it's going to be of some uh, interest or some value for you, because we say many things, but haven't looked deeply into what we are saying. We only seem to understand superficially, because if you are from Portugal, you know. You learn to speak Portuguese very naturally, and you inherit words from other people and from your environment without having to look deeply into them. And if some word is important, it must be the I. The I word must be the most important, because other words cannot happen until the I word is there. Because every time you speak something, you say, I think this thing, or I want, or I choose, I remember, I used to do this, I want to do, I, 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 I. It's behind every utterance, every statement, even thought is behind each thought. You know, I think, remember, I remember. Breathe even. I breathe. Have you ever seen an eye breathing? It will claim even that. The breathing is happening by itself. When you're in deep sleep, breathing is going on. Nobody says, I breathe. But the eye takes even this. I breathe. You know? So it's important, as you will come to see more and more, if you want to go more into the subject of your own reality, you will have to find out what I is. Because to find out what everything else in life is, without finding out who the I who finds them out is, then your knowledge is not reliable. If you don't know the knower of knowledge, who is I? Is it constant? Now, some of you may have come and think, well, our subject would have been discussed in another way. Like you know, is yoga good? Or you know, I've done this type of thing, and uh, I'm going to go to India. Would you advise me to go to this ashram? I said, listen, who is your I? And oh, I'm not ready for that. You know, I am me. I am, uh, and you start to des describe you or, or try to define you, and all you're talking about is your body. I am 25 years old. The body is 25 years old. I'm a woman, we can see that as a female. And everything we speak almost is about our body. Are we merely our bodies? So I like to start at the fundamental things. You know? If we understand the fundamental things, then all the other things will fall into place. If your foundation is no good, then your building will be suspect. And of all foundations, the I foundation is the most important. We all say I, but what do we understood or feel or take I to be? You see, I and being, they are synonymous somehow. Even the feeling I am 
Is there anyone here who can get through a day without feeling I am? You see, everyone refers to themselves as I. I is our natural name, actually. And yet nobody gave it to you. I is our natural name, and yet nobody gave it to you. No parent have named your child, uh, you shall be called I. Then the child grow up and they say that this child will be called John. And the child seems to grow up and says, I am John. But I is not John. We need to find what I is. So if we can clear only this up, it will touch into a place within ourselves that I'm sure it will be. You will say, yes, it was worth it just to look into just this thing. Rather than study, go to university, study all the things, or study astronomy, study astrology, study politics, study biology, study geography, study religion. If I say, study your eye. If you know your eye, then you'll know the others, because they came out of I. Without I, they are meaningless. And nobody has gone in no curriculum, in no university, you see the subject is I. Nobody discuss it. Nobody looks into it. Only those regarded as the sages in the human kingdom, the Buddhas and the Christs and so on, the Shivas and so on, uh, understood the power of I, the truth of I. Hmm? And they found it in its true meaning to be so important that they forgot everything else. They forgot everything else, including themselves. They forgot everything else to find what this I is and where this I come from. Hmm? And because they forgot everything else, including themselves, the whole world cannot stop remembering them. Isn't it funny? Huh? Yeah. They forgot themselves, and the world cannot forget them. We are desperately trying to remember ourselves, to keep ourselves, <laughs> to even be important in the world. People there. Uh, Why do we get onto this subject? <laughs> you started only by saying, <laughs> I want to be. But I said, But you are? No? Huh? When you say, I am, it, is, it means to be. Am means to be. He says, I am. Who is the I who am? Can you imagine? We know so many subjects. There's no other species on this planet that has studied like the human being. They want. They're the most curious species. They want to know everything, not only on this planet, but other planets also. They want to know, huh? Isn't it? We want to know other planets. We want to know what happened. Some people talk. You know, fifty billion years ago, this was what was happening. And if you ask them what they had for breakfast yesterday, they can't remember. <laughs> Fifty billion years ago. <laughs> There's a joke somewhere in this, I think. <laughs> <laughs> huh? Who is the I that am? What is it? If am means to be, what does I mean? What is it? Hmm? 
if you don't allow this feeling I to connect with any thought, any concept from any zone of time, it is there. What is it? We can do now, we can find out now. Huh? Something is here. If it is not connected with anything from any language, any any word, any concept, any belief, uh, any form, because it perceives everything. If it is not attached to any or connected with any concept, then try now and see. What is it? Don't say the words, because even the words you speak will not be it. It sees the words being spoken. It observes the breath, even. It sees seeing. It perceives perceiving. It does not need the mind. It watches mind, but not even with interest. Can you feel? Can you feel or not? Yes. Hmm? You can feel. What can you describe? Hmm? Everything comes after. First, the eye must arise. If you wake up this morning at seven o'clock, at six fifty-nine fifty-nine, where were you? What could you discuss? What was your name? Seven o'clock. Something comes into being. A natural sense of I am here, even without the words. It is the first to arise. No? You cannot perceive the sense of you before the sense of I. First, the sense of I must be there. Eh? This knowledge, this consciousness, I am, must be there first. Then the sense of you or other or world can come. So it is you. You can say it is the first born of consciousness. The feeling, I am. So this I am itself arises, isn't it? because at six fifty nine fifty nine it was not there. At seven it came into into being, you can say. It became self-aware. Hmm? Now it is 3.33. It is still hmm, in the waking state. Now it knows time, 3.33. Three, three. But can anything know it? Even to say, I am, it knows I am. It perceives the sense I am, the thought I am. It perceives the thought you, and world, and late, and breakfast, and everything else it is perceiving. Um, but does it have a shape? Breakfast this morning is muesli. Eh? The body consume. Enjoyment takes place and is perceived to take place. Satisfaction or dissatisfaction also arises and is perceived to arise from the place of I. That is a kind of weakness, a kind of a weaknessing of what is arising. 
So before even any of this, I say, if you don't attach any intention or idea or identity to I, so nothing at all. When you start counting, you start counting from one, not from zero. Isn't it? One, then two, then three, then four. But before you get to one, one arises out of zero, no? but you don't stay zero. Okay? I is at the zero place. It watches one happen, and two, and three, and four, and five, isn't it? So don't touch any, don't touch one. Hmm? Are you or are you not? I, am, I, am, I, am I on on this or what? Okay, we are here? Oh, thank you, thank you. <laughs> yeah? So you don't touch one, you are here, no? Okay? You naturally know you are. You don't need a mirror to know you are. You know you are. Hmm? Supposing someone was having operation and you were or you were in some coma or you wake up, suddenly become awake, and there is nothing to see, nothing to touch or to feel or to measure, nothing at all to perceive. Would you not also know that you are? Wouldn't you naturally know I exist? Hmm? Yeah. As what do you exist? First feel, then say, do now. Don't hold on to anything. Hmm? Time is up for all. I am that which is. Why all? Where does all come from? All is later. You can feel. I gave example last week, and I'm going to repeat this week because many are new, and I think it is worth to share. Once we were making one guided meditation, we were recording a guided meditation, where you see, and then at some point I was listening to a guided meditation, and uh, there was a period of silence, <clears throat> no, and the silence. Uh, I remember that the silence was longer before, and it was chopped. Someone was editing and felt the silence was too long. And so they chopped some silence, but it was too short now. Okay? So they wanted to put back some silence. Okay? You follow or not? Okay? So what they did was they just recorded blank some digital silence. They put some digital silence, okay? Then we played. And you can discern the real silence from the digital silence, isn't it? Because the real silence has an atmosphere. Hmm? The digital silence is dead, isn't it? Nothing in the universe is like this digital silence. It's a newcomer, <laughs> okay? <laughs> this digital silence, okay? When you leave everything now, that is, you leave everything, don't touch anything. What remains here? Is it a digital silence or another silence? Feel your being. What are you perceiving? Is it sound? Is it form? Huh? Because I didn't ask you to suppress your sense your senses. I said, don't be attached to them. Leave everything. Yeah? Because senses you can perceive also. Yeah? So don't identify. Don't say, I am, I am the hearing, I am the seeing. I am. No, no. Don't touch anything at all. What is here? It is not a thought. Go beyond thought. Don't touch any thought. Hmm? Ah. Says, I sense a presence here, a presence here. Is she correct or not? Yeah. 
There's a presence here. Okay. Is it particularly female or male? No, it's not female or male. Is it Portuguese? <laughs> Is it Christian or Hindu or Muslim? Or anything like this? Does it have any kind of distinguishing characteristics? So this presence, which has no data, has no, has no other quality. This is your self. When you are conscious, this is the self of the waking state. You can say like this: This is your dynamic being. This is the seed being. It's not a doctor, it's not a mother, it's not a wife or a husband, it's not a master or a disciple. It's not red or blue or pink. It has no size and no shape. Let us just give a few moments just to acknowledge this that you have seen. Does it know time? Is it affected by time? Everything passes in front of this. This is the very seat of perception. Where even perceiving is perceived. All knowledge reports to this. All knowingness spring from here. This is where witnessing of the existence is taking place. It is referred to as the godly sense or principle inside each form. It announces itself inside the body as the sense, I am. It knows it is. But it doesn't belong to anybody, nor does anything belong to it. As you become aware of it, notice your inner state. How empty and silent and deep do you feel disturbed? No. Do you feel alienation? No. Do you feel separation? That's because you are resting inside your own being. <coughs> Even to say that you are resting inside your own being is too much. Simply you are. Now, does it take any effort? <laughs> Forgive me for taking so long to answer your question. <laughs> 
what is making effort and to do what. It's the person, the yeah. identity with the person. Yeah, and could we clearly, because I've heard about this person. <laughs> I think it's the same guy showing up all the over the world, one. no? But I want to meet this person <laughs> because it's only been a rumor so far. We want to meet this person. Where is the person? <laughs> What is it made out of the person? Is it the same as this that you the effortless one? Is it the same as the sense of presence? The person? No. No. Okay. There's a a mixture of, of belief, like really a strong belief yes. of this. person or identity that that wants to get the presence somehow yes yeah but the presence is there already isn't it yes so how can the person have the presence you tell me <laughs> uh, yeah. doesn't make any sense <laughs> which is the greater the presence or the person it's the presence, yeah. and everything comes from that. It's yes. the seeing of that. Oh, okay. And at the same time, this other. Where did the person come from? From the presence. Yes. Okay. From the source. Yes. And you are. The presence. Okay. And what does it want? Doesn't want anything. <laughs> Thank you, you got me. <laughs> <laughs> but does the show end there no? We have to look, no? Because we look for the for the person because the person wants a lot of things. And the person invited, please speak for yourself, okay? Because the presence doesn't want anything, but we hear that person wants a lot of things. <laughs> Will the person please stand up? <laughs> and make a case for yourself. What is it that's missing? What do you want? Hello? <laughs> is he? Oh, it's back. Present back. <laughs> Is there two? How many people are living in this house? <laughs> Is it a single apartment or a shared apartment? <laughs> <laughs> Two eyes or something. What, why is it still like going on? You know. This? Okay, so this is one, what we want to find out. Uh, first of all, uh, very few people have had the chance, the opportunity, to really have a sense or to really recognize or acknowledge or come to a place where you are in the direct experience of presence. So presence and you become the same thing. It's the same thing. Okay? You just have, and you are. Now, when the presence disappears, please put your hand up and say, the presence has gone. Only the person is here now. Okay? <laughs> okay? Any time we are here, when the presence just goes or vanish, noisily or quietly, and you become aware of it, just say, "Up, oh, sorry, presence is gone." Another person, okay? And then, 
So we want to know why is the person still persisting after you came and you looked and you say, I asked you, this, this sense of presence is here. Is it shared? Is it a shared accommodation? Is it in there with something else called a person? Did you answer this question? In this house of being or this house of... Uh, it, it seems to be mixed. Mixed with? The presence with the person. Okay. What would notice this? What would be able to notice that it's mixed? The that, that's another itself. one again now. Huh? Or the, awa- the presence itself, the awareness. The awareness. Mm. Um, can I, I, I spoke to, I listened to you say something. Is the presence mixed? Okay. So, this is good. Uh, we, I went to her because when she answered before, she said there seems to be just a sense of presence. She didn't say, I think there's a sense of presence. You were, your tone told me you are affirming and confirming there's a sense of presence. But when I asked the question, what is aware of presence? Is there an awareness even of presence? And you say, actually, there seems to be something like a kind of an intelligence in which even presence is seen. Would that be true? Let's go back again to the sense of presence. Is there anything wrong in the sense of presence? (laughs) We are communicating now all together. We are in the room. Close the door, please. Nobody out. Please answer this question. Is there anything hmm, wrong or missing with the state of presence? You alone can answer this question now because um, you don't have any textbook in front of you. Hmm? Not what did you say? No. Nothing. Yeah, nothing is wrong with it. Huh? So it is quite good. Huh? Quite, <laughs> it's quite happy. Hmm? What is the environment of presence like? How do you feel? You feel well, or you feel? Hmm? Just presence now. Huh? So, in spite of feeling very, very well, there is even something beyond, it seems, presence, in which even presence itself is perceived. At least someone in this room knows it <laughs> or senses it. And then that's behind presence. What about in front of presence? What is happening in front of presence? Behind presence, you say, there is a space, like a kind of intelligence. We don't know what to call this thing. It's not even a thing. Because is presence a thing? Then even presence itself is perceived, meaning that whatever is perceiving presence is even more subtle than presence even. No? Okay? So let's go back in front of presence to what we say must be person. Because in spite of recognizing that there's just a, what we are using the word presence, it doesn't have a sticker called presence on it, but the word presence seems satisfactory for the moment. Presence in front of presence is coming something called a person scratching about. And what's this? What's this person feeling like? Is it also? Does it have? Is it an object? Is the person an object? What is it made out of? Dream. dream. Somebody say dream. Huh? Thoughts. Huh? Thoughts. Feelings, thoughts. Emoji. Huh? Condition. Energy, condition, all of this. Yes, seem to come together to create the sense of a person. The sense of a person. Okay. Is comprised of uh, thought, feeling, imagination, projection, conditioning, uh, vibration. Some persons say or energy. Okay, okay. Is it tangible as a unit? The person 
Can it be caught? Can you introduce your person? It's changeable. Okay. Like a kind of contraction. All the things you mention is what you are perceiving, isn't it? Huh? Uh, because all the things we put together, we say, yeah, this is what comprises a person. No? And the vibration, everything. But so something looks upon the person, it's, just, it's studying the person. Okay, That which is aware of the person, is it a person? Yeah. Which is greater, that which perceives the person or the person? Which is more constant? The perceiver, like this and that. This is called experience. Hmm? The person wants something. What makes the per- Why does the person wanting something matter to you, the presence? Again, you have come to a place where you are aware of yourself as presence. Okay? Is anything attached to presence? Does it connect up to something? Or how is presence? Hmm? Is it needing anything? No. Is it unhappy? No. Okay. Uh, can it die? You feel confident to say this? Can it die? No. Okay. What is the connection of the person with presence? When you say I, what are you indicating? The person or the presence? Presence. Is that all the time? No. No. Why not all the time then? When it feels so good. And sometimes I don't know it. I referring to what? Hmm? Please look, because we we don't have to speculate now, because we are actually in the experience itself. When you're in the experience, you don't speculate. You simply share. You can simply observe, isn't it? Hmm? What is the concern for the presence? Uh, with a person. Yeah, it seems the attention goes there somehow. The attention goes there. Is the when the attention goes there, does it mean the present goes there? Does the presence go there? So the presence is even capable of observing the movement of the attention going somewhere. Yes. Does it alter the presence? No. Okay, what's the trouble then? Hmm? Identification comes, and somehow the sense of presence seems to get converted, or somehow converted into the state of personhood, or something, isn't it? And it's the presence that's believing that it's the person for a while, isn't it? So belief comes, eh? and although belief can belief itself can be perceived by the presence, it can see, oh, I'm identifying again. Yes, I can see strong belief. If I can see strong belief, I am not the belief. So the belief, uh, when when believed in, uh, must give some effect happen to the presence, whereby it goes into some kind of hypnosis and gets converted into the state of person. Uh, yeah. Is that absolutely? This happen? No. So there is some some sense of going in and out of focus. So sometimes it feels I'm now the person, and oh no, my life is so terrible. When it goes back into presence, it goes, oh my God, thank you, I feel so good. Om Namah Shivaya. When it goes back into person, oh my God. I don't think I'm ever going to get this. I don't think I'm worthy enough. I don't feel like you see like this. So something is oscillating between the sense of person. And then presence. What is it that creates uh, attention? Attention, okay. But the presence is able to observe the attention. 
but not always. So what practice is, is to try and keep observing that when the, the, the habit, that when the attention goes and belief goes in the attention, it creates a kind of drug effect in upon the presence and the presence start to behave as a person. Okay? When the presence becomes self-conscious that it is always capable of watching, okay, then that delusion doesn't happen. That hypnosis doesn't happen. When the consciousness keeps on being conscious of consciousness, after a while it doesn't have to do it anymore. And the sleep is over. Just like when this body was, what is your name? Priya. When this body was born, the name Priya or any other name didn't come on the forehead. God send you, I'm sending you Priya. Yeah? The body came empty, no name, and somebody thought about what should we call this one? Whatever, whatever. No? So their name was decided. Also, name can change, religion can change, belief can change. Hmm? But there is something that cannot change, and there is something that change. Body is changing, thoughts are changing, the perceiving of thoughts changing is there. Spirituality or the search for truth uh, begins when there is consciousness that you can observe without identifying. And when you observe without identifying, a space opens up inside and you begin to feel very well and very unattached. And this detachment itself is a great joy. How to get to that stage then? Like How to get to what stage? The stage the, where the you detachment. are not troubled. Yes. 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 All okay. the time. So the time. again, you must ask where are you asking this question from? From what state are you asking? So you are only asking this state from the identified state, isn't it? No, but you must be aware of it. You see? Otherwise you're just taking your questions for granted, you're not using it. When you say, you know, so how can I get to that state of presence? But you were there just a second ago? The, the consciousness, what you were just talking about, the consciousness being conscious of... Yes. At first, it is true to habit, the habit, uh, repetitive, of associating with the body that I am the body, I am the thought, I am the thinker of thoughts, and so on. Now, there's two exercises. Uh, one is that you keep saying, "But, uh, but I am not, I am not this thing. I am not this thing." You can look, or you can also recognize that you cannot be it. Rather than sim simply saying mechanically, I'm not it, you can actually see that all, all that you see, you're not. All that you see is phenomenal, meaning that it, is, it cannot exist independent of your perceiving of it. And keep holding on to the perceiving, stay at this perceiving place. Just doing that by itself, you'll find that your mind stops worrying. No more worry comes. Because everything that comes, you see it comes and goes. Everything is a cloud, simply coming and going. And you are only the weakness of the cloud, you are not a cloud. But that comes from the state of presence. Everything is appearing to it and going, coming and going, coming and going like this. Only when the presence becomes the person, things become sticky. When the presence become person, things become personal. And all problems are personal. That's why the presence has no problem. You understand that this happened? So for a while is the habit is being seen through, that you keep seeing that it's the habit to be to just assume you're the person. And this unchecked habit perpetuates the condition of delusion. You're always behaving. Everyone here is consciousness. We are all consciousness. You didn't decide to be. You are, you know, choicelessly consciousness. But what happened is that uh, uh, it was not encouraged in life that we should be self-conscious in the proper way. 
we became psychologically self-conscious, meaning that you become over-conscious of being a person. And that is a very insecure state. This is why we are not comfortable with each other. True self-consciousness is to be aware that you are the presence, not the person. You see. So when you speak, oh yes, I'm going to go and do this and and what I think, and some people can keep it up for a very very long time, you know. And I went this, and she said this to me, and I really didn't like it. I told her, this, and I'm still going to get you, and I'm not going to resign. And it's, and if you listen, you can say this is all coming from the I am the body, I am the person idea. And yet it's same using the same I. You see, because I say this, God says I am. The devil also says, I am. The ego says, I am. So, is it the same thing? And yet, somehow, we are also using the words, I am, mostly to mean, I am the body. When your I am becomes, I am consciousness, or I am presence, your whole world will change. Your whole way of experiencing your life existence will change. Mostly we are speaking on the basis, I am the body, I am the person. Now that you are made conscious of it, you will begin to notice your parents are doing it, your teachers are doing it, our employers, your students, everybody, children are doing it, everybody, you are doing it. We all speak from the basis of I am a person. Are we obliged to speak, I am the body. Is it something that's unavoidable? Or is it just habit? You need to find out. What is important is that there is an awareness that the sense, I am a person, is not a fact. It is fiction, in fact. The fact is, this fictional person is perceived from the state of presence, but you are not conscious enough that you are presence, because of the habit of louder reflex to keep on going back to the position of the person. Now when you come to satsang like this, and we are in this environment, the environment, the charge of consciousness is the highest state of consciousness. When you are in the field of a higher state of consciousness, automatically your environment internally becomes higher in a state of consciousness, and so you are experiencing the feeling or the state of presence much more easily. Because nothing here is promoting person. And when you are not in the space where you are promoting person, how well you feel. You see, now did you create this state of presence? No, it is here. It has always been here. It's the background. You can say like this for the moment. It's the background state, hmm? whereby you understand the feeling of of personhood. It like like this. Something will go as you have demonstrated also, because you are very clearly in a state of presence. Without any, are you making any effort to be presence? Is anybody making any effort? Are you saying any mantra? I am presence, I am presence, to be present? You are naturally in a state of presence, isn't it? Hmm? The mind at the moment is not liking this at all. Maybe like that, no? Because its food is I am the person. The I am the person mode, yeah. Is hungry for a bit of gossip, a little bit of chat, a bit of chit chat, a bit of nonsense, a bit of this type of stuff. It's a habit. It's like athlete's foot, hitching, hitching. So sometimes you have to give the mind a bit of doggy food. Get back into that state. But as you become more accustomed to being in the higher state of your own self, it's not of someone else's self. It's your own self. How well you feel, naturally. You are in the height of your own being. You are in the Himalayas of your own being. Where did, how did you do it? What exercise did you do? 
What gymnastics did you do? Nothing at all. Just you're made aware that there's a space inside you can look from, which normally you're not accustomed to looking from. Then for a while, it seems it's very difficult to be in a state of presence. Because right? the mind is saying, no? how can I go up there constantly? I go back until being the person and feels, oh yes, you know, like, you know. Give me another smoke. It can't, you see? But now, what effort are you? You're effortlessly in a state of presence. Then it has been said here in this room, but there seems to be a space within which even presence itself is perceived. Now, I wasn't expecting we'd go there so quick. And yet, going there means nothing because there's no distance. There's no distance to travel. Just the awareness confirm, but even the state of presence, hmm, at a certain time, maybe at twelve o'clock tonight, or eleven, or at whatever time you go to bed, yeah, this state of presence also would subside into deep sleep, and its world which comes out of the seed of consciousness, will also subside into oblivion. Something is still there, though. If you are the state of presence, and this presence subsides, it means that you are finished, or there is some break in your being. If you went to bed at 10 o'clock, wake up at 7, then for nine hours, you don't exist. Can we look at this together now? Do we have some space for this? Okay, so let's look at what happened then, if you go to bed at 10 and wake up at 7. You see, Now, in the waking state, you have the full um, uh, awareness of the state of presence. The state of presence in the human kingdom is somehow some beings are not living in the state consciously of presence. When I say of conscious presence, I don't mean that they're being conscious of presence like work. It's sometimes it's effortless, effortlessly self-conscious, effortlessly presence. They're not doing anything to be presence. And some are doing a lot to be presence. Some have got to do mantras to kind of reach the state of presence. So they may have to speak Om Namah Shivaya, Om Namah Shivaya, Om Namah Shivaya, Om Namah Shivaya, and somehow it lifts the consciousness naturally into the state of presence. And when they're in the state of presence, even if they don't say Om Namah Shivaya, Om Namah Shivaya, somehow unconsciously it still goes on, and they're in a state of presence. But the best is to be in the state of presence without effort. That's your natural state. Hmm? Just like you don't have to keep remembering, I am Priya, I am Priya, I am Priya. No. You neither remember nor forget it. It's just there. If you're doing some complex work and someone called Jennifer, you will still do your work. Priya, yes. You see? But you're not thinking, I am Priya. So that feels natural for you. Then the fact that you are consciousness is even more natural than that. Because without consciousness there to remember that you are Priya, if you don't have to make any any effort to remember your prayer, then how much effort do you have to remember to, that you are consciousness? The very fact that you exist means you are consciousness. The very fact that you are existing means you are presence. It's just a habit of converting or believing that the presence is the body and the conditioning which gives rise to the belief you are a person that seems to hide your intuitive knowingness that you are presence, but you are presence. Or consciousness, same thing. But in deep sleep, the sense I am, the feeling of being and witnessing of the world with detachment subsides, go into oblivion. Who are you now?
when you're in the state of presence, when I ask you, please, can you describe yourself as presence, what will you say? I ask you, in the state of presence, you are presence now. If I ask you to describe yourself as presence, can you each give a separate biography of presence? Yes. Do you feel you have lost your privacy? No. Because the person can be private. Does presence need to be private? Okay. So the state of presence is here. No? Like that. Can you define presence? Can you say something of presence? I can say something. From this state of presence, it says, the perfume of this presence is peace and a natural joy and an intuitive knowingness that something here is eternal. It has no beginning or ending. It has no form. This is what I call the perfume of the presence. Does the presence have any weight or size? Can we say, please? Does the sense of presence have any weight or size? Do you have to speculate to know this? No, you know it directly, isn't it? Okay. When you go to sleep, eh? when you go to sleep, because presence somehow causes witnessing to happen. So you are you are observing, observing of the world, of names and forms and different beings and time and so on, takes place or occurs to the presence, but the presence is not particularly doing anything. It is the beingness itself, isn't it? All right? But in deep sleep, witnessing of the world is not there. So even the sense of presence, which is the witness of the manifest world, that functioning also subsides. What remained then? Because every night, I think every one of us go there. No? Eh? We spend a lot of money to buy the best bed in order to go to this place, where you have no experience of world and relatives, you have no religion, you have no belief, you are not from any political party, you are not a mother or a daughter, you could get married today, honeymoon, but in this deep sleep state, you are no husband, no wife, nothing at all is there. And yet you don't protest. Nobody goes, no, please, no, I don't want to go. I don't want to stop experiencing. Nobody says this. We go nicely. In fact, we should not have to wish each other sweet dreams. Dreams are not that sweet. And also, you don't rest if you are dreaming. Total, total lights out. Dead sleep. You must wish people dead sleep, isn't it? Nothing to report, isn't it? Because not even your sense I am is there. Huh? And we say a day is in a human measurement twenty four hours. Twenty four human hours we say we call one day. And yet nobody is living consciously twenty four hours. So for about eight hours you are nobody, you got no name, got no status, you could be the prime minister of your country, you are nobody in deep sleep. Okay? Yeah? And yet everyone loves the state. You enjoy sleep or not? Yes. yes. And yet who are you in sleep? So therefore, you enjoy being nothing, isn't it? Yes. <laughs> now a sage is the one who enjoys being nothing when they are awake. Also, you only enjoy being nothing when you are in deep sleep. <laughs> but if somebody tells you in your waking state you are nothing, <laughs> you want to fight them, isn't it? <laughs> huh? 
because in the waking state, you want to be something. <laughs> so the best thing is to appear to be something, yet inwardly to be nothing. The best of both worlds, isn't it? <laughs> because if you tell anyone in the world you are nothing, you're not going to go very far. <laughs> Okay, <laughs> because everybody just wants to be something. So you don't have to put yourself into difficulty. You can say, "What do you do?" I say, oh, "I am a doctor," and so on, so on. What do you do? Oh, yes, I am so and so and so. Because they keep them happy. But inside, you stay as nothing. nothing. <laughs> <laughs> and it's not something that you are speculating also. Because now you directly experience. Someone in Sangha say, Thank you for allowing me to be nothing. When you are something, you have to keep it up. One time, one woman, she says, Oh, Muji Baba, I love to see you, because when I talk with you, you always sympathize. Now, if I was to accept this, huh, every time she comes to talk to me, I have to sympathize. And that's a pressure I don't want to keep up. Yeah? Just to accept this compliment, yeah, you always understand. As I say, sometimes I don't understand. Yeah? Yeah? You always are on my side. No, 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 no. Sometimes I'm not on your side. Uh, what you want to do to accept? Oh yes, you know. Well, you know, I am always on your side. Then you always have to be something. So, the one who wants to be nothing, the one they call him wise. Was that one they call Socrates or something? He says, "I know nothing." The one knows nothing, just like in deep sleep, I know nothing. They call him wisest man, wise man. Why do they call someone who admits they know nothing wise? Therefore, the one who call Socrates wise must themselves be wise. Isn't it? They must know, listen, you you don't know it, so you are wise. Well, you must be wise to know that, isn't it? And then the whole world accept that Socrates is wise for knowing nothing, so they must also be wise, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> or are we all pretending by that time? I don't know. They say he knows nothing, and that means wise, so it is. I don't think anybody here does. Yes. Yeah. Do you know him? I don't know him. I never met the guy. <laughs> this whole satsang has been about you. <laughs> this is what has triggered all of this. It's been worth it or not so far? Yes. Yes. It's very good. The direct introduction to your own self. If you say, you know, or you write a biography of yourself or something, all this information, and that all this information is true, this is what you are, or what you have discovered here today in this moment, this is what you are, which one will you choose? Yeah? Huh? No. Which one will you show your boss? We have to be smart, we are not stupid, no. You show them the other one, no? You show them the other one, but this one you keep yourself. Because in being nothing, it doesn't mean that you perform less. In fact, sometimes you perform much more, much better, because you are not so attached. You are not working for reputation.
just like you go to the bank and you talk to the bank clerk at the window and you talk about and she says, well, we give this much and here, well, we, we will give you that and talk about, you know, as though it's her money, but this is not her, not her money personally at all. You see? In the same way we speak, I did this and I am doing that, but inside you know it's not it's not not quite so. <coughs> and this is why you'll find amongst many people who have reached a certain stage of awakening, they can tell you, you know, I am in a way I'm sharing but I'm not sharing. I'm giving but not giving. Something appears to be giving, but inside behind this there's neither giving nor receiving. Is much more profound than the logical mind can admit. Because when we live as a person, we are living in only one dimension. But when you are aware of yourself, you understand what it means to be a person, what, where, where we are speaking from, from some kind of, from the idea you have of who you are. That's what the person is. The idea you presently have of who you are, and these ideas are changing. But something is unchanging. Now you are beginning to be aware of what is unchanging. When you are aware of what is unchanging, and yet you are aware of what is changing, and you know the unchanging, and yourself is the same, then you can allow the changeful to be. When you put so much effort in the changeful, we are always making unreasonable attempts to try and pre prevent change, at a certain point, you see, and then you're not in synchronicity with the world's unfolding. When you found your stability, from there you can allow the world to move in its dynamic spontaneity, without needing to to prevent or to get in the way. Has anyone lost presence since we've been talking? Has presence departed somewhere? No. Here, somebody said yes. Yeah, where? Who? Which one? The the presence went, yeah. so the absence is speaking. Uh, the, the the presence is speaking. Yes, yes, yes. The presence can be without the person. But the person cannot be without the presence. Please stop and, and, and see if this is true. The person is the, con is the constant within the waking state. Hmm? The presence is the constant relative to the person. The person is the variable. It comes in and out of the picture. Underlying the person is the presence. The presence can be without the person, but the person cannot be without the presence. Yourself is like space. Our mind is like wind. The wind needs space to move about. The space seems the wind seems restless. The wind moves, but the space does not move. The space can be without the wind, but the wind cannot be without space. Judge which is the greater, stay as the greater. You can never say, you are not. You can only say, you are not such and such a thing, but you cannot say, you are not. Because in order to say, I am not, I must be there to say, I am not. Therefore, the sense, I am, it is complete relative to the person. The person says many things. I am this, I am that, I want this, I want that, I did this, I did that, and so on. The presence is constant, relative to the person. Now, I gave a picture that I saw some time ago, and I often refer to this picture. I saw a picture of a bird. Two birds are in a tree. One of them is making a nest, busy, flying off, bringing things, making a nest, busy. Above this bird, on another branch, is another bird that's just looking. 
Again, there's a bird in a tree building a nest. It's active, it's doing something. Above it, on another branch, is another bird that's just looking. It's not doing anything. The active bird is, is the mind, is the person. It's, the, it's intention, desire, attachment. Huh? Above is the bird uh, that's not doing anything. This is the presence. I'm only talking about aspects of one thing. You see? The active bird that's moving about is our dynamic activity. The passive bird is the state of presence from where witnessing of the activity is taking place. Are we aware of this or not? Just like you can feel the sense of a headache coming and getting stronger and then going and you know you're not the headache at any point. So you experience feelings and emotions coming and going, knowing you're not them. It is only when we believe, I am the body, I am this particular body, and the conditioning that arose for this body, when I believe this, I can believe other conditioning that come on top of this, easily. When you become aware of the sense of presence, that it simply is. It's not on the way to somewhere. Hmm? Feel this now. <coughs> like a vastness, a silence, is much bigger than your body. You are not something that's stuffed inside this body as far as your fingertips and as high as your head. From the perspective of presence or consciousness, you can say, I am in the body, but you can also say, the body is in me. In fact, all bodies are in me. Everything I see is in me as consciousness. But if I believe I'm only the body, I feel, well, you know, I only what I can see, I can see. But I am always, always a part. Everything appears inside consciousness. Just like a movie is watched only on the screen on which it's projected. Beyond the screen it is not. In the same way, we are perceiving on the screen of consciousness. The difference is that this is a three-dimensional screen, in which we also play a part as this person moving in it. At a certain point, you are able to perceive without the identity or the belief that you are a person. There's only functioning. Now you may f it may sound a bit cold, uh, because we feel that the person brings the heat and passion to something. But as you become aware of presence again, please do that now. Is presence cold? No. You see. So, is it is it, is it do, do you give anything? to an experience by being personal and is an experience less by being presence? Does it benefit by being personal in your experiencing? No. Yes. So the same thing has happened. The same function, the, the sight and the senses are functioning in front of presence just as it appears to be functioning in front of the person, isn't it? But experience is different. The person experience and is also capable of observing, but the difference is the person is observing with self-interest. The presence merely observes. It wants nothing. It lacks nothing. It wants nothing because it lacks nothing. It is a state of completeness. Can you verify this for yourself or not? Yes. Thank you. This is called a direct experience. I am not asking you to believe something, isn't it? But you can see now from your own direct uh, self how it feels for you, and you can speak for yourself, not from what you have read from a book. You are seeing now, and you are corresponding with life 
in real time with the universe. You don't have to go to the past to answer any question I'm speaking. Because the consciousness, unlike the person, the consciousness does not rely on past. The person is obsessed with past. It is always bringing things back from memory, from past. And you said this last week, and you said you'd do this. The presence does not need any of this because it is the complete state. Can you see? Can you verify or not? Yeah. Very good. Take a few seconds again. Just simply <sighs> marinating in your own presence. Neither doing nor undoing. Nothing to change or to fix or to heal. Nowhere to go. Nowhere to leave. Nothing to become or unbecome. Beyond need. Beyond desire. Beyond fear. Not waiting, not needing next, nor past. Not supported by any concept, not affected by any concept. Pure awareness. Now there is a, a force or a tendency inside the, the presence or the consciousness that has a habit to go back to the person, to relate from the person, and to hold your attention on trivial things. It has a tendency to remember uh, wrongs being done to you, things from childhood, injustices and all of these things. But it does not serve your truth. It only keeps you feeling personal. Are you aware of this tendency? Yes. Okay? Don't worry. They are there from habit. You simply keep acknowledging the presence and that the person is a construct. The person, huh? the person uh, comes and goes. The person is the needy self. The presence is complete and whole. You're always looking from the person. The person is the greater. The presence is the greater. The person is the lesser. Again, the presence is the greater. It is the constant relative to the person which is coming in and out and is only an apparition, only a kind of ghost. Now you are aware now of the state of presence. The presence cannot be sick. It cannot get better. It does not have good days or bad days. It is always perfect. Can you confirm for yourself? Yes. yes. So, for the first time for many people, you can speak something from your own heart, from your own self, without relying on something from the past, what somebody else has said, what something that you believe. You can speak directly from the state of presence.
It is greater than any theory, than any thesis, than any speculation. It is your immediate and direct experience. There is not a lot you need to know, in fact. There is studied knowledge, and there is intuitive and spontaneous knowledge. As you stay with a sense of presence, your life will come into a flow of spontaneity more, where you don't have to be strategizing your existence. Your intuitive powers will rise up. You'll be more conversing with life intuitively and energetically, more than always mentally. Mentally has its own role to play, but by itself is inadequate for a complete life. You can see this. It's not that you have to now practice many things and keep many things going. You will see that if something is needed, it comes into play at the appropriate time. Yeah. All you do is keep staying in the position of presence. Your actions will become the more space inside. Now as you look from presence, do you feel any claustrophobia at all? No. Always it is space. There is a spaciousness there. The personhood state is quite contracting. It's always tight. You see? One of our modern diseases is a lack of inner space. But it's only because we're living life too personally. From the state of presence, you're not living life personally. The person is only a mask that is worn for a short time by the state of presence. The mask is not what the presence is. Now you are in your inner spaciousness. Even this spaciousness is not quite inner. It's, it's got no dimension. Inner, outer, it's beyond this, in fact. Hmm? Don't give this to your mind. Don't try to capture with your mind. There is nothing you need to capture. You are one with the vibration of being, the vibration of presence. You are moving into a state more of holiness, than of personhood. You will naturally know this thing. You feel lighter. You may have a feeling you know nothing. This is a very healthy state of being. Do not be afraid. If a thing needs to be known, it will manifest quite spontaneously. You will notice this. If it doesn't manifest, simply keep quiet. You don't have to know everything. I am very pleased with the way this time has gone today that we are focused in such a, a simple way. We have not picked up any domestic questions. We have not <laughs> talked about... <laughs> have you noticed? And we have not talked about all oh, this thing and lots of uh, problems and so on. Simply focusing on the sense of being. We didn't go somewhere to get the being. We didn't rent it from somewhere. It is always here. 
from within your own self without turning to the left or to the right, up or down. You are in direct oneness with yourself. It is not merely belief. It is your immediate recognition, your direct recognition. Hmm? Not one thing recognizing another thing. Self-recognition. And sometimes I refer to it as a non-phenomenal recognition, which means that it's not recognizing an object. It's only the self, self-aware. Spiritual knowledge is not about amassing lofty spiritual um, or philosophical concepts. Amazingly, it's not about concepts. So maybe the word knowledge is not the true word. Or maybe, in this context, it's the only true word. To know means to be. Where knowing and being are the same. If knowing and being are not the same, if knowledge and beingness is not the same, knowledge itself hmm, is only phenomenal. It's only information. You are more than information. You are not information. Spirit, presence, being. This is true for everyone. One religion doesn't have it more than another. One people don't have it more than another. In fact, nobody has it. It has you. But higher than that, there is no you personally, in fact. It is just a working title. You as a person. What we are, is presence, appearing, the one appearing as many. The many recognizing it is one. The unique fragrance of each person, you can say, each form, that uniqueness does not interfere with the oneness of being. In fact, it only sings its magnificence that even on one flower, each petal is unique. So consciousness in each form expresses uniquely yet one common source. Consciousness is our language and our being. Consciousness conversing with consciousness about consciousness. Can we sit with this for just a moment, moment or two? Notice that as we are sitting here, wherever you find yourself, your natural 
state, knowingness, is simply that of existence. I exist. No effort needs to be made. No striving. Simply, you are. More information is not required. This sense, I am, is not information. Notice that you are not waiting. Nothing, no event or object or action can make you more you. Though the mind seems to possess or have the sense of time, of past, present and future, you who witness mind are timeless. Beyond all categories, Subtler than attention, subtler than belief. Subtler than all concepts, subtler than space even. For space is perceived in you. Nothing defines your being nor confine it. You are not on a journey. You are simply here. Not waiting, not expecting. Not controlling. Not receiving, not giving. You are not being entertained. You are not seeking or pursuing. Simply you are. And there is no pressure in this. Notice this. No anxiety. No drama. There is no threat.
there is no threat. There is nothing to protect or defend. Totally empty, silent. You are not imagining this. There is no need to imagine anything at all, nor to move your mind. You are not in a state of stress. You are not holding anything together. There is no need. Effortless, complete. You are not in a state of transformation. You simply are. Acknowledge this. Recognize this. Nothing is against you. Mind is not your enemy. Mind is not your friend. You are neither sociable nor unsociable. Unmixed presence. Timelessly complete. You are not in search of any experience. Like space, you are everywhere. You have no colour, nor design, no shape, nor size. Pure awareness. This body is merely a vessel, a house, a temple, that you reside for a time. But you are the imperishable, the unbound. This is not a compliment. A reminder. You are not a work in progress. Stay as awareness. There is no strain. There is no suffering. 
except that which is offered through your mind when you identify personally. As pure awareness, there is nothing to give up or to change. There never was. Nothing sticks to you. For this, you must descend into the state of uh, personhood. Every sensation, every thought, every feeling is merely like a cloud that is floating in the infinite expanse of space. You are not your mind, nor your thinking. Neither are you offended by them. Let things come and go as they will. You cannot go, because you never came. Like space, awareness is everywhere. Remember and know this deep inside your being. There is no end for truth. You are neither a good story, nor a bad story. All things come and go. Let them come and go. You are the witness only of them. How you felt yesterday and how you feel today has got nothing to do with what you are. Feelings come and go, as does everything else. Remember this. Observe this. Do not attempt to define yourself, because to define is to confine that which is ever free. Happiness is your nature, not something you should find. It is what you are. Peace also is your perfume, joy, love. It seems as though we forgot this. They don't return merely by remembering, but by recognising.
close for this part of the satsang. Will somebody come? We have someone to come. We are going to have some music just for uh, a few minutes. Thank you. <laughs> the name Priya is really the beloved, you know. All this was about the beloved. We are both the beloved and the lover. So at the end of this um, um, bhajan, uh, we will just have a break for 15 minutes, take some chai, and those of you who feel you need to leave, you can leave. We will come back, and uh, the second part of the satsang today is uh, usually offered up for reading through some of the mails that are sent each week, each day, uh, to myself. And uh, it's a beautiful time. For, for looking through and responding to some of these mails, and everybody is welcome to to come for this. Uh, so, Shiva. Shiva. 